FYI, it's cold here. I put on this shirt and ever since I started sitting down at the computer and touching metal things like this keyboard, I'm getting shocked repeatedly. So welcome to the channel. My name is Eamon. Let's learn about creating all day events. The first thing that we'll do is set up our calendar. I've got a custom calendar that I made here. Just click this little button right here, plus, and then create new calendar to create a new calendar. Once you've selected your calendar, settings and sharing, and then go down here to calendar ID and copy this big nasty string. If you're using the built-in default calendar, this could be your email address. Use that in that case. I'm pasting mine over here in this little section for calendar ID in B5, and I've also named that range calendar ID. The other things we'll do is name the range event list, which is going to be all the event items down here in the table. And then uh, as you can see, I've just added some items. Now column J is where I'm going to have our app script check it off if it's been added to the calendar, so it won't re-add it and duplicate the event. So I'm gonna leave just the first one unchecked because that's all we're gonna look at first and foremost. Let's open up apps script. And I've created several functions for that basically do all the same things. They're just iterations on this same theme. The first one is for the default options. So the thing you have to have is a title and a start date. You don't have to have an end date. You don't have to have these description location invites, all this uh, optional stuff. And you don't have to have a recurrence option. So this is just bare essentials. I want an all day event. First thing we'll do is we'll uh, get the sheet. We'll get the active sheet. Then we'll set this ID variable by using that same calendar ID named range and getting the value of it. So that's gonna store our calendar ID. We could paste it in here, but I just like to hold it in a clean variable instead. And then we're going to get all the events. So we're using that other named range of event list we're getting the values. And then this last part, I'm just doing some fancy filtering so that if I have a huge list, it's gonna filter out all the values that are empty. And it's also not gonna look at this column. So there's always gonna be some value in the existing checkbox column. So I'm just not looking at that by using this slice. Okay, then the meat and potatoes is a for each loop right here. And we're basically just looping through each item in our list. So each item, each row is an event. And for each column of each row, the title is going to be the first part, the start date, the second part, the end date, the third part, so forth and so on, all the way to this existing column. So we're looping through those and we are referencing them using this bracketed notation. So this E represents the row that I'm currently looping through. So the first E is the first event, which is this right here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check E8, which is column J, and see whether it's true or false. And if it's false, which is what I'm indicating with this exclamation mark, then I'm gonna create an event for that event or I'm gonna put it in the calendar rather. If it's true, it's not gonna do anything. So that's, that's why this conditional uh, if statement is there. And the first thing inside here is that we're gonna use this create all day event method, which is in the calendar app class, which I'll have links for all this in the description below, but here's the documentation for it. And it walks through the same iterations that we're going to use here. So we're gonna create all day event, and the only two things we need are this E0 and E1. So E0 is column B, the first item in this first row of events. So E0 is the title, E1 is the start date. We're gonna use both of those as arguments in this method. And then the next two lines right here allow me to set those checkboxes in column J to true you remember this is zero indexed, so I'm creating a new index, which is index plus eight. So in the case of this first line, 
the index is zero, but I need J8 to be set to true. So I'm gonna create J8, or I'm gonna create eight right here, and then I'm going to get the range of J plus new index, which is eight, and set the value to true. Kind of complicated, but it's a nice touch to have on here. Okay, let's see it in action. And I'm going to just run this right here. And we see that toggled to true. This is on the 22nd, and there it is in our calendar, sample one. Okay, sample two is the same thing. This is now using two dates. So the only difference here is right down here in our calendar app, create all day event, we're using E0, 1, and 2, because we now have a title, a start date, and an end date. And this should create uh, from January 27th through the 30th. So let's change our function to two dates, and let's run that. And we should see over here in our calendar, there it is, sample two just popped up. And uh, interestingly, it goes through the 29th. So if you want the end date to actually go through the 30th, then this would need to be the 31st. And it's checked that box again. Okay, let us do with options. So right here on our third row, we have a sample three with a range of dates, a description, a location, guests, and send invites true. So if you have guests and send invites false, it's not going to send the invites, and if it's true, then it will. Let us go back in here, show you the differences that we've made. We're gonna use the uh, first three rows, and then the way we use the options, the optional options, are inside of a curly bracket or a curly brace. This is an object. So we've got key value pairs, we've got description, location, guests, and send invites. Now I tried to do this all in one cell over here and just write the curly braces, basically write the object inside the cell, but it was not having it. It wanted it, uh, it, it wouldn't import it correctly here for some reason. So I've got it written in here, and then we're using E3, 4, 5, and 6 to get those strings from over here. And let's see it in action. We're going to run, not two dates, but with options, boom. And we'll watch that change. And then over here, boom, sample three. And if we go in here, we can see we've got our fancy description. We've got New York as our location and awaiting this other email address, uh, we have emailed that email address. Pretty cool. So the last thing I wanna go over is not something that I'm going to have a working version of in our code, uh, but I do want you to be aware of another method that's very similar. If you use the uh, create all day event series instead of just create all day event, if you use this method, it gives you access to this recurrence parameter. And you can see it at work right here. And it's gonna be in the app script that I've included, but some of it's hard coded, so it's not gonna work well uh, for what we wanted it to do in that it's gonna pull, we wanted it to pull everything from the sheet values. This value right here, I had to hard code the week uh, weekday that it does recur on. So anyway, all that to say, this is one more method at your disposal but it's got a plethora of rules and parameters available. Here is class recurrence rule, and you can see all the different things from daily, weekly, monthly. Uh, there's probably yearly down here. Yeah, only on year day and year days. All sorts of options if you wanna get into the weeds there, if you need something real specific uh, for your events. Anyway, it is in here under function recurrence if you wanna take a look at my simple example. And uh, as you can see on the right-hand side, I got, it to, uh, I got it to recur only on Mondays when I tried to have it pull the day of the week as a variable in our app script script. But when I used it down here like this, uh, it, it didn't 
keep the Thursday value. So it plugged it in twice. I tried it two times just as a Monday recurring event for some reason. Don't know why I did that, but it did. Uh, then I got it to work on Thursday when I just came down here and hard coded it. That's why it's not really a working version, but it is here for your information. Hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, if you don't mind, take a moment to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I make tech tutorials like this on the regular, and I would love it if you would follow along and learn some new stuff this year. Have a great one. You're awesome. Bye.